Hi, I'm Kimberly Neal. I'm your Dance Muse host, and today we're thrilled to be speaking with Alina Mietinen. After spending a decade dancing professionally with the world-renowned American Ballet Theater, Alina discovered a love for acting. She's been quite busy pursuing acting, film, modeling dance, and starting a brand new business, and we can't wait to hear about it. Alina, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So where are you joining us from, and how's your day been so far? I am in New York. Uh, my day has been great, and I'm excited to share all about my story. Your background's so interesting, so it's almost hard to decide where to start asking you questions because I'm sure listeners will want to know so much as well, but we're also really curious. So I guess, can you first tell us how you first discovered your enthusiasm for acting and when you decided to start pursuing it as a career? Yeah, um, I first discovered acting about five years ago when I actually got an injury and I was still with the company, with ABT at that time. Um, and I always had curiosity about acting, but I was, I was a little bit hesitant starting it because it's something very different from dance and I wasn't sure really where to start. But then since I was in New York City and you have endless opportunities here, um, I got an injury and I thought, okay, well, now my days are not uh, spent in the studio because normally I would be dancing all day and I had so much time and I was like, okay, now I have the opportunity to try acting. So I found an acting class and I, I went and I loved it. I, I fell, fell in love with it and I was like, okay, well, maybe this is something I'm gonna do after my dance career. Little by little, I started doing more and more acting and uh, um, doing little projects here and there and um, taking different classes. And I thought, okay, well, soon I should switch my focus. Um, and although I still wanted to dance, but I, I wanted to do more dance on film um, as uh, compared to just being in the company. Because at that point, I, I was in the company already for a decade, which is a pretty long time. That's amazing. So when you were deciding to transition out of ABT, what was that like for you? Because it takes so much training, I'm sure our listeners know, but it takes so much training to become a professional dancer and especially ABT to reach that level. So I'm sure it was a thought provoking decision for you. So just what did that feel like for you when you decided that you were going to shift more into freelancing and doing what you wanted to do creatively as an individual? Yeah. Um... I have to say that I was in a good place in a way because I had a clear vision what I wanted to do. And I had studied acting already for a few years at that point, which gave me certainty and um, confidence in knowing that I can be pursuing other things. Uh, but I have to say it was definitely a little bit scary. Um, just, it's just jumping into unknown after having a contract for years with the company and, um, you know, having a certain schedule and certain routine for so many years, um, then realizing that when I'm on my own, I have to kind of make up my own schedule and kind of hustle and work more to get gigs and to get cast. Um, but I, I feel like it, it happened pretty naturally. I've always been a person who liked to seek um, different projects and different things. So it just, it kind of happened and I, I just found myself actually working more than when I was in the company. So when you first began ballet, do you feel like it was love at first sight? And then when you first took an acting class, do you feel the same way? It was also love at first sight? Not really, actually. There were different. Um, with ballet, I remember, <laughs> I remember being a little bored in the beginning because, you know, like ballet requires a lot of patience and discipline and um, um, focus. So when you're a little girl, you just want to dance around and like have fun. Um, so I think it took time for me to really get into it and first I treated it as a, as a hobby 
Um, and honestly, my mom was the one who was like, okay, let's, because I was doing rhythmic gymnastics first. Um, and then I kind of wanted to switch more into dancing. And then my mom found me a, a dance school and then I auditioned and then I got in. So then um, I was excited to be dancing, but then I realized how strict ballet is and you have to take the time and you, it takes time to really develop the technique and stuff. So um, yeah, it was like a slow process. But then once I realized that I was good, that things were actually working out for me, then I was like, okay, I want to really do it. Makes sense. So when you had that realization, what kind of happened to shift you into dancing professionally? Did you just decide this is what I'm going to do and go for it? Or was it a more gradual process? I think it was more gradual process. And I clearly, I, I clearly remember the time when I was 15 and I attended my first ballet competition, which was in Sweden, and it was um, Scandinavian countries. So um, a few countries were competing um, together. So I won a prize. It was the second prize, um, and I was only 15. So I felt like, okay, so it gave me kind of encouragement that, oh, I'm actually good. Um, and I started realizing the more I was doing, and I, I attended actually a bunch of competitions. One was in France and then um, also in Finland, and I traveled to New York to do another one. So the more I was having success, um, the more I realized that I could do it professionally. Um, so it, it, I think it kind of happens in a way naturally because you can't really know when you're young that how good you are unless right. you're having success or you hear from your teachers or from your um, peers that, you know, that you're actually good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I would say that. But compared to acting that you asked me if it was the same, um, with acting, it happened kind of instantly. Maybe also because I was older and I waited to study acting for a long time, or I kind of like had it on my mind, but I didn't do it. So when I finally did it and I realized, oh, you know, I can actually do it. Um, it was like right away, I started, you know, finding an agent, I find, um, finding a manager, just I started working on it really hard right away. Those are really interesting contrasts, and that makes a lot of sense. So when you were pursuing your professional dance career, can you just tell our listeners a bit about how you came to dance with ABT specifically? And if you think there was a difference in your professional dance career, you were in the Finnish National Ballet first, and then transitioned to ABT, so just the difference between the two, and what you learned, I guess, with both. Yeah, um, I started with Finnish National Ballet, when I was 19 um, and before that I was training in Amsterdam for a year so I got all my training in Finland and then when I was 17 I was like okay I need a little bit more training so I went um, to Amsterdam for a year the program was actually a two-year program but I wasn't sure if I was gonna get a job yet so but I auditioned uh, for Finnish national and um, I got a contract, so then I left Amsterdam earlier. Um, and while in Finland, dancing with the company, uh, my director actually, uh, at that time, she um, was in jury in New York at the competition. And so she asked me if I wanted to represent Finland. And of course I was like, oh yeah, like of course I do. Um, so I traveled to New York, international competition in the summer of, um, 2017 and um, it was really eye-opening everybody was so good and at the same time was a little scary because I didn't have or I didn't see that kind of international level before um, so that was definitely inspiring but then um, the director of ABT had invited me uh, to take class with uh, the company so, which I also didn't expect. And I feel like I was, you know, in a way at the right place at the right time. Um, and I was really prepared for the competition. I, I was really focused. And um, uh, the director from ABT was 
watching class and also our rehearsals and then he picked a few dancers who he wanted to see um, audition for the company and I kind of went in without any expectations because I knew I was going to fly back home to Finland um, in a few days and um, I had a contract there so you know I didn't put any pressure on myself so in a way I feel like when we put so much pressure on ourselves and like if we want something really really badly we might not do as as well but i was kind of like it was the end of the trip uh the competition was over i went into the class and i was quite relaxed i didn't think like oh i i must get this contract um so yeah and and, and i left and they told me they'll be in touch and two weeks later i got a phone call wow, wow. <laughs> that they have a contract for me and i was like what <laughs> Wow. wow yeah it sounds yeah. like it worked out just because it was supposed to and it really goes to show how hard work and preparation like can really pay off so once you started dancing with abt did you encounter any challenges that help you grow into the performer that you are today yes there there were a lot of challenges um coming from finland a very small country of five million people um, and only Manhattan has like, you know, pretty much the same. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a big uh, difference. So um, working with Finnish National and ABT, uh, the difference was huge. The routine or the, the schedule was just so much more intense at ABT. So I wasn't quite ready for that. Um, so I felt like, you know, in, in Finland, we took more time with everything. So, um, it was definitely a lot on me, but I grew to answer your question. Um, I definitely grew as a dancer and as an artist because I was challenged in so many ways. Um, they had to learn quicker. You had to be uh, more prepared. You, um, you got to learn so many different ballets in just a few days. Like sometimes we would have, you know, in one week we would learn Sleeping Beauty, Swan Lake, Giselle, and maybe a contemporary piece. So you had just so many different rehearsals um, in such a short amount of time that you had to be ready for that. So while you were going through that, do you feel like you were more of a story ballet person or a contemporary ballet person? Did you have a favorite between the two? Um, you know, I used to, when I was younger, I was more of a contemporary ballet oh. person because I actually did, in my opinion, I did better in like contemporary ballet uh, stuff at competitions and stuff. But then at ABT, because um, the company focuses more on story ballets, it became more of my thing. And I mean, my teacher kind of always told me that I had like this artistic thing about me, <laughs> which at that time when I was young, I was like, oh, I didn't really, I wasn't sure um, what she meant. But um, yeah, I, I think while dancing with the company, I realized that that was definitely one of my strengths, just bringing characters alive. I see how that can transition into acting as well. So then my next question for you is, what does the day of an aspiring actress in New York City look like? And how do you think it's similar and different to your days as an aspiring ballerina? Yeah, it looks, it can look a little chaotic, <laughs> but now during the pandemic, it's been almost a year we've been in this coronavirus. Um, it's very different because everything has slowed down. But um, I would say before the pandemic, I would have auditions in different parts of town. So sometimes I would be downtown and then 30 minutes later I would be uptown. And then, you know, a couple of hours later I would be midtown and then maybe I had an acting class later or then I, I took a, a dance class in the morning. So I was utilizing the... New York subway a lot <laughs> back and forth um, but now it's um, not as much traveling anywhere or commuting anywhere um, there's a lot of self tapes so uh, my agents and my manager send me um, auditions um, and I record them at home and I send them in 
So two of your recent films have received praise by the Paris Art and Movie Awards, and you were featured in Silk City, which won Best Dance Film for 2020, and you made your directorial debut with your film Edgar, which was also nominated for the Best Dance Film at the Paris Art and Movie Awards. This is the first time in history the same artist has appeared in two different films, which is really awesome. So what inspired you to create Edgar, which you directed, produced, and performed in? And then can you also just talk a little bit about Silk City and the experience of having two nominations? Yeah, um, I really wanted to produce my own work. um, And um, I wanted to put dance on film, which is two really important parts of my life, film and dance. So um, I asked my friend uh, Zhang Jingfang at ABT to choreograph a piece for me. And um, I actually wanted to dedicate the film for my brother that passed away three years ago. So I wanted to make it um, something like uh, memorable. And I thought it was like a sensitive topic um, to kind of put on film and, and, and wanted to do it through dance. So yeah, it was a very organic process with my friend and uh, we got together and I, I got help from a couple of other friends in the film industry. Um, and I really enjoyed the process, um, directing it and, and putting it together and actually performing in it. Um, and um, I've been submitting it to some film festivals, and now, yeah, I I got ex- the film got accepted into the Paris Art and Movie Awards, and and I was really happy about it. And Silk City um, was also accepted, and we won as the best dance film, which was amazing news. And um, the filmmaker is also from Finland, and we've been um, we've worked together before, and. Um, we just wanted to create something amazing on film and uh, we got together and asked uh, choreographer Jorma Elo from uh, Boston Ballet. He's, he's, a, he's also Finnish, but he's a resident choreographer in Boston. And so he agreed to do it and uh, we got together and we put it together just in a couple of weeks, weeks actually. That's really beautiful, and it's really interesting to hear how you collaborated with other artists as well. So throughout the experience, what was the most rewarding thing about that process for you? Or would you say it was healing in any way? Yeah, I think I'm able to communicate through acting and through film more than in life. Um, I feel like people tend to hold their emotions um, more and then acting kind of gives you an excuse to be vulnerable and be real so um i wanted to especially in edgar um i wanted to show that and i wanted to put all the emotions that i had on film for that and yeah it was definitely healing and it it gave me some kind of closure and uh, i have something forever now um to remember So another question I have for you is you've become an entrepreneur in the past year with Ballet Body Today, which is really awesome. Congratulations. The first thing that I noticed on your website, and I think Dance Muse noticed this as well, is that it says it's never too late to start a new dream, which I think is so appropriate for the past year we've had especially, but in life in general. So can you just tell us a little bit more about your new ballet business? Yes. Um... It's, yeah, I've been working on it for many, many months. I actually had, I met a lot of people throughout the years, throughout my career, who would ask me if I teach ballet. And a lot of those people were um, people who are not actually dancers, who maybe wanted to learn ballet when they were younger, but they lived in an area where they didn't have ballet schools, or maybe their family didn't have money to Uh, afford the ballet class and um, they wanted to actually learn and I realized that it's not available to a lot of people because yeah we live in New York there's like classes everywhere but there are towns where people don't have these classes and they want to learn and especially to learn from a professional that's 
not something you get to do all the time. And even local schools, they might have classes, but to learn from an ABT professional, for example, is not that common. So I thought, you know, I should create something that is available for anybody. Anybody in the world um, can take my course. And so um, I started developing it. So I actually wanted to start it before the pandemic, but then I was always rescheduling because I felt like, oh, I still have time and it has, because I was so busy and it requires so much work. And, but then when the pandemic started, I was like, oh, this is the perfect time. Like, I'm really gonna do it now because I have more time. So um, yeah, I started recording it and uh, it, it took, <laughs> it was a lot of work. It took me six months to put it together and to launch it. Um, and it's very challenging to do something in New York City because, and especially from your apartment, because um, it's loud and uh, <laughs> all of that, but, it's okay, it, it worked out. Um, but the whole idea in my course is that it's very detail oriented. It's not just you're just gonna go take an open class and you'll, yeah, you'll learn plie and tendu, but do you really know the technique inside and out? So I wanted to kind of. Um, uh, teach my course in a way that how I learned ballet in my ballet school. How if you're actually taking a real ballet program, how are you taught? So I figured that there's a lack on the in internet of that. So you don't, it's hard to find something like that. Um, it's very different when you just go and take a ballet class, but you don't know all the details of the technique. And so my course, the very first one that I launched is for the very beginners who don't know anything about ballet technique, but want to know, or for those who know a little bit, but want to know in more depth. So um, I, yeah, I just wanted to put all my knowledge there, all my expertise, just, and, and I also talk about, you know, when I dance in the company and kind of bring more to it and, um, it's to be clear it's pre-recorded um, i recorded 10 modules and um, the whole idea is that you can take it at your own pace so people with busy schedules for example um, they maybe don't have time to schedule you know once a week or twice a week certain classes so they can take it whenever they have time let's say if you're a mother of a toddler and your child is sleeping you have they're like, okay, I have an hour now to exercise. They can put it on and, and, and do it. So, and, and it's, it's, the beauty of it is that it's for all ages. Cause like, it's never too late. Like you said, to start a new dream, it's just never too late. So you can be seven years old or you can be 65 because ballet basics, it's, you can learn it and you can do certain exercises at any age because there are so many great benefits from doing ballet, um, like having a, a posture, a good posture or strong core, which will prevent you from back pain or um, stronger muscles and flexibility, coordination, musicality. There are so many things. And actually what I want to emphasize um, that ballet body today um, I don't want people to get it wrong. It's not about this super skinny, um, overly flexible, unrealistic figure. I think dancers these days um, are strong, athletic, graceful, healthy. And I want to point out that that's ballet body today. It's not only about losing weight or looking super skinny. There's so much more to it. So I'm also gonna I'm, I'm gonna write a blog post about this um, later on to kind of put more of my thoughts into it. But um, I just think I think what's important for people to understand and realize that if they want to learn ballet, they don't. It's not for only skinny people, it's for everybody. It's for all ages, all shapes. You can do it anywhere, anytime. Um, 
And yeah, and, and, and if you're too shy to go into a classroom, you can take it online. That's great, because the studio can be really daunting. I mean, even for people who have been dancing forever, you take a break and you go back and it's just like, nobody look at me. So I love that you're giving people that option to really focus on details and have that sense of accessibility in a really thought out way. So that's so great to hear, just really so cool. So my final question for you, um, this past year has been a time of reflection for a lot of individuals. So I would just love to hear what you would recommend to others who have an adventurous spirit like you about starting something new or someone who might be hesitant to pursue change. Well, I think there's nothing to lose ever. So you can do it. Yeah, I mean, the only thing you'll lose is time. So if you, <laughs> I mean, during the pandemic, there's a lot of time. So if you feel like you don't want to waste your time, then what, I mean, I don't know what people really do on a daily basis, but it's just, if you really want it, you have time for it. And so I think it's worth it because yeah, people think, what if it doesn't work out? But what if it does? Like how amazing that is. So I think you should always go for it. If you want to try something, just go for it. So what's next for your future? And do you have any upcoming projects or goals in the works? Yeah, um, well, I'm going to keep working on my business. Um, and also, I've since I just uh, signed with a new manager in LA, so I'm going to be more by coastal which i'm really really excited about um i will be working on a film which one is a, a dance film that we actually didn't finish we started doing it in the fall but I, I will i will be going back to la to finish it and also um i'm working on a feature film with another uh, filmmaker which i'm really excited about but yeah, um, this freelance life is such that things just come and go randomly. So it's, it's hard to say. Sometimes I just know a couple of months in advance and then you end up being busier than you thought. And um, yeah, but I kind of love it. it. It keeps it fresh. So I just want to say thank you so much for spending some time with us today and sharing your story with our Dance Muse audience. And I've definitely been inspired by hearing your story, so I'm sure the audience will be as well. And if you'd like to keep up with Alina, sorry about my cat. If you'd like to keep up with Alina, you can find her on Instagram at Alina period gold, E-L-I-N-A period G-O-L-D-E and at Ballet Body Today. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you.